times I've been spared pain and misery. Even when I played the fool, your unseen hand was there protecting me. Though I've had my share of troubles, I must confess to this reality that when I look back on my yesterdays, I have to raise my hands and say, Lord, you've been good to me. You've been good to me. And I just want to thank you. You've been good to me, Lord. And I just want to praise you. You came for me. Lord, if I confess all my sin, forgiveness would be mine. And faithful to your promise, you cleanse the stain that sin had left behind. Just like it never happened, you held me in your arms so tenderly. You assured me of your mercy. Restored me completely, Lord. You've been good to me. tonight turn to the back of the book no page number but in the fly leaf at calvary and let's stand together and sing at calvary tonight in the back of the book no page number just in that fly leaf page Great. 
Amen. Thank you for Calvary. We're glad to see you in the house of the Lord tonight to worship our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to make sure, well, now if you're visiting for the first time, I want you to uh, lift your hand, let the ushers find you, and bring your card, and we'll sign it and put it in the uh, offering pan. And then Wednesday night, our trunk or treat is coming up, and we're asking you to come and have a good time, fun time. We're going to be giving out gospel tracts to everybody that has a candy bag. We're going to have old cars sitting out here to kind of have a little fun on that, too. And it's just going to be a time of fellowship and relaxation. And I think we're going to be having hot dogs and uh, things like that, Pepsi's or whatever you want to drink. And so you come. Uh, that's Wednesday night now coming. And then uh, Sunday school next Sunday at 10 o'clock. And everybody you know, avail yourself to that opportunity. Baptism, baptism next Sunday night in the evening service. We had several to be uh, come in to the Baptist uh, meeting tonight, and we're looking forward to that. And then the dedication of babies will be November the 13th. And so uh, parents, remember that. And then Christmas is on Sunday this time. We're going to have our Christmas service on that Friday night, the 23rd, uh, at 7 o'clock. We want to pray especially tonight for Brother Roger Crenshaw, one of our newer members. Uh, his wife went home to be with the Lord today. And so let's pray for that family. And then uh, we want to pray for Donnie Finley. That request came in just a little bit ago also. We want to be able to pray for Donnie. He's in the hospital. And I don't know how serious it is, but I know he's in the hospital. All right, us as you come, we'll receive the tithes and offerings you give tonight as the Lord has prospered you. Amen. What a day. And I want to thank again all the ladies that did prepared the meals for last week. My, and fed those preachers. I mean, you fed them well. And they had a great time and enjoyed that. I appreciate all that you did. And I also thank the ushers for taking care of all the uh, things, the necessary responsibilities for the church. You did a great job. I thank everybody. I thank you all that came. And back with Jubilee, we had a good time, good preaching, good singing. And the Holy Spirit blessed everybody. Brother Jack, lead us in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you now again that you give us another opportunity to come back into your house. Lord, we just uh, focus on the service tonight. We just ask that you continue to bless. Bless Brother Sammy and our choir, Lord. What a blessing they are every time they get up there and sing for us, and we just praise you for that. We pray that you'd bless them and the musicians, Father. Then, Lord, uh, we know that we got a long prayer list that uh, a lot of sick folk on it, people's had surgeries and whatnot. We just ask that you minister to them and do that that needs to be done. Bless our pastor, Lord, as he comes to us in a few minutes. Just give him liberty to preach to us. And just uh, take this offering now, Lord, and multiply it over and over. Yeah. And we'll praise you now for what you do for us. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
first began to walk with the Lord, I did not really trust him. How he longed for me to understand that I I felt his loving arms embracing me. And I've been through enough to know he'll be enough for me. hands hold this universe and how could I ever question It's always open now anytime you want to come to the altar and pray even if I'm preaching if you've got a burden so heavy and you need to come to the altar you feel free to do that because we're just wide open for the Lord we want to do whatever God wants us to do and I appreciate people that feel free to come down and worship the Lord like we do in our church we thank God for every one of you I want to turn to first Kings tonight to some familiar scripture I think to us but over in verse number 24 of chapter number 18 in 1 Kings, uh, chapter number 20, uh, 18, verse 24, 
And call ye on the name of your gods, plural, which are no gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, Elijah said, and the God that answereth with fire, let him be God. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry. And he said, all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Now I want to talk a little bit about the fire came. Here in the Word of God, if we study <coughs> very closely, fire often is used as a symbol of God Almighty. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Now this is not talking about an old century's jealousy like we have. It's talking about a holy, holy reverent je uh, jealousy. And this warning was given to those that had left God out and that had picked, uh, taken up with idolatry. And many, many people were worshiping different so-called gods. And this, of course, displeased God. And it displeased God's man. You know, if there's anything that really upsets me worse than anything is for somebody to come up and try to present to me a false religion contrary to what I believe. And they they're think they're right, or they try to make me think they are, and they try to make me feel intimidated. You could never in one instant intimidate me about my Lord. Nobody, nobody could ever cause me to bow down and knuckle under when it comes to Jesus Christ. Brother, I may, I may die for him someday, but if I know my heart, so be it. I, I love him that much. I thank God for the way y'all have sung about him tonight. Now David, you know, he spoke of God's anger in uh, Psalm 18. And of course, uh, he called upon the, Lord, the name of the Lord in his distress, and the Lord heard him. You've sung about that. God's always available to you and me. In Psalms 18 and verse 6, In my distress I called upon the Lord. Verse 7, Then he said, Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also, the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Brother, this is a powerful God that we're talking about. In Ezekiel, Ezekiel the great prophet saw the fire of God in his vision of God by the river of Shebar. And then the word of the Lord came expressly unto this great prophet Ezekiel. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was uh, about, and about it to, in the midst of it, and it was the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. And then in John chapter, of course, John the uh, Beloved, he saw his vision, and he saw the fire of God. He said about God in Revelation chapter 1 verse 14, his head is, and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So God is, is symbolized by these uh, fires. Truly our God is a consuming fire. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. People that are rejecting Christ today, the day uh, if they don't repent, it's going to be a sorrowful time when they find themselves in the hands of this consuming fire. And Jesus Christ, of course, appeared as fire. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7, And to you who are, who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall come, shall be revealed from heaven with his holy angels in flaming fire, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is referred to here and then in other places as well. Now the Holy Spirit is referred to as fire in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Angels are referred to as fire as in uh, Psalm 104. And then here from heaven, fire from heaven in the Old Testament was something that was a sign of the presence of Almighty God. These fires that we're talking about and we've seen and many others, I don't have them all, 
listed tonight, but God, that symbolizes the presence of God. God is there. Well, my rent friend here in Elijah's day, Elijah, God told Elijah what to do, and Elijah obeyed God, but there were those that, of course, wanted to oppose him, and like Ahab, he t accused Elijah of giving trouble to Israel, and Elijah said, not me, I, I, not, I'm not giving trouble, you are. And so, brother, listen, they don't like it. People don't like it when we have the fire of God in our soul, the fire burning, as Jeremiah talked about, burning in our bones, and we can't stay. We can't stay back. We can't hold back. We have to preach what comes out of our mouth. I, I, I mean, I often pray and think about it. This world's getting in such a bad shape. What is it going to be in another year? What will it be like in another year? How, how, how awful would it be if somebody doesn't do something? If we don't get some people in there to lead this country right, we're going to have some hell to pay. They're going to really give us a rough time, born-again believers. I'm talking about fundamental preachers especially. But I've already set my heart. My heart, like the psalmist said, is fixed. I'm going to tell you, till I die by the grace of God, I'm going to keep on screaming it out. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. We met with these little children tonight. Uh, that are going to get baptized. And every one of them knew when I said who uh, we worshiping, and every one of them said Jesus. They all know Jesus is in their heart tonight. We better get them saved. We better get them under the sound of the gospel. We better be faithful to church. We better get all of our family in church and keep them there by the grace of God. You say, well, I got a son or a daughter, and they rebel. They don't want to come to church. Well, brother, you need to be the kind of dad that ought to be and, and see to it they get in church. That's right. Mother, you get them ready, and dad, you make sure they get in church. You don't let a child run over you, and I'm not trying to be hateful and mean. But it's time that parents took hold of this thing and told their children. You know what? Not bragging on anything, but I'm just going to tell you I thank God that I have, I've got four children that come to this church. They're members. My sons-in-law are members. And I have never had one of my children to say, Daddy, we don't want to go to Truth Missionary. Now, we have gone off somewhere, somewhere where it's kind of dead, and they'd say, well, you know, I don't really want to go. Well, they went anyway because I went. But they have never said they didn't want to come here. They've never said one derogatory thing about your church. I taught them that this church is what God gave us. We live here. We live here and, and we advance here. We, everything about us is God. And so we love the church. My family loves the church. And I thank God they do. But we have several things here I want you to notice very hurriedly. First of all, we have an answer to if, I if. Over there in verse number 21, Elijah said, If the Lord be God, then follow him. If Baal be God, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Oh, they didn't say anything. They didn't have a decision. They didn't make a decision. They hadn't decided yet if God is God or if Baal is God. Brother, if you're in that if situation, you need to get it settled tonight. You need to make sure you know who God is. We sing, I want to know more about Jesus. We sing, you know, I know, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Well, you better know who God is. And so we see right here the people in indecision now in verse 21. How long? Look at verse 21. He said, how long halt ye between two opinions? Elijah said, why don't you people make up your mind? You're just standing still doing nothing, gaining nothing, and you don't know who God is. Why don't you make up your mind? If you're going to worship Baal, go worship Baal. And then go to praying to him. Ask him to help you. Ask him to encourage you. Ask him to let you feel something in your soul. It'll be as dead as a rock. But let me tell you something, brother. If you let Jesus into your heart, there'll be times when you'll be so lonely. There'll be times when you'll be sick. There'll be times when you'll feel depressed and out of sorts, but all you got to do is just, whew, let's say Jesus. That's all in the world you got to do is start talking to Jesus. All of a sudden, your soul warms up. You get encouraged. You get blessed. And, brother, you're ready to go another step. You're ready to go on for him. And so Elijah puts these people and the prophets of Baal, he puts them on the spot. You're going to put up or shut up. That's the attitude Elijah had. 
That's the way I feel towards you modernistic people out there. That's the way I feel towards you people that can't believe the King James Bible. That's the way I feel about you. I feel that you haven't made up your mind yet which Bible's the right one. Well, why don't you make up your mind? Why don't you realize where, where the Word of God is? So indecision gets nowhere and gets us nowhere. Everybody in here, you have to make decisions every day. You have to make decisions on your job. You have to make decisions where you're going to go and what you're going to do, what your activities will be. You have to make a decision on whether you're going to church on Sunday or not. And a lot of people make the decision, I like this bed better than I like Sunday school. So you sleep in. Well, you know, I'm going to fuss a little bit while I preach so y'all get used to it. Boy, I tell you, if Elijah had been here, he'd strip us up. I mean, he'd strip us good if he, if he were here. So, my friend, indecision gets us nowhere. Decision must be made. Decisions every day must be made. Our businesses cannot flourish without we make decisions. This church, how did it get here? People made decisions. God's people made decisions as we tried to follow this old book, the Word of God. And so, my friend, scrambled opinions will get you nowhere. You can listen to opinions all the time. You hear one say this and one say that. Boy, I got my boot camp at Woodside, and boy, there were so many there. There were as many religions in Woodside as there were in, in Jerusalem. All kinds of cults, all kinds of uh, denominations, all kinds of doctrines and everything. And I faced every one of them, and they gave me one hard time. As a young Christian, and especially as a young preacher, they really put the they really put the pressure on, trying to get me discouraged. But by the good grace of God, brother, they didn't conquer. I remember times as a young Christian, I'd go home after being attacked by religion. I'm talking about religion now. I'm not talking about drunks. I'm talking about religion. Attack me, and I'd go home, and I'd get this old Bible out. I'd put it on the bed and get on my knees, and I'd start reading this Bible, and tears would come in my eyes. I'd start talking to God, and I'd say, Lord, show me out of this book how I can be lost. I want to know how I can be lost. They said I can be lost, and I just got saved. I'm saved. I trusted Jesus. How am I going to be lost? Lord, show me. And God, the Holy Ghost, would lead me to John 5, 24. Hey, and all of these good scriptures that we've passed on from death unto life, you're not going to lose your salvation. And boy, I'd get a bunch of these scriptures, and really, I didn't know where to go. I'd just start turning through the Bible to find something. God would lead me to that particular verse. I'd write it down. And boy, I'd memorize that thing. And I'd go back to that meal, and I'd say, all right, boys, we're ready. I got my gun loaded, and let's get with it. And boy, they couldn't stand the Word of God. They wanted their tradition. They wanted their doctrine, but they did not want this Word of God. Well, I felt, I felt like, praise God, I got the victory because I got the true Word of God, and I got it in my heart, not only in my mind, but in my heart. And so scrambled opinions a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. One must know the truth if they're going to be free. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They're not free. I asked one man of another denomination, I said, have you ever been saved? He said, yes, sir. And I said, are you saved now? He said, no, sir. And I said, well, if you were to die right now, what would happen? He'd say, I'd burst hell wide open. Like he was proud of that. I said, if I thought I was going to burst hell wide open, I'll tell you right now, I'd get on my knees and get saved right now. But they don't know what they believe. They're scrambled in their mind. The devil's got them blinded. 1 Peter 1.12, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Now, people must be built up. They must be built on a firm foundation, and Jesus is that firm foundation, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So, the answer to if was settled. If you believe Baal, if you believe God, so you're going to have to settle that. You can't have both. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve both of them. But not only do we have the answer to if, but we have the aim of truth. Elijah, he was calling them to make a decision. Come on now. So, and Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you a bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, 
for you are many, and call on the name of your gods, plural, many gods, call on them. And he said, but put no fire under it. Don't set that wood afire. Don't you get close to it with fire. Let it alone. Let it just uh, stay right there. But you call on your gods and tell those gods to set that wood on fire. Hey, I'm putting it down where we live now. He was wanting them to bring fire down, if they could, from their gods. And then in verse 24, he said, Call you on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers with fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. So he said, choose now, and then call. Fix your altar, build your altar up. Get it fixed, beautiful. Have the wood under it, ready to go. And then you start calling on your God to set that wood on fire and burn that sacrifice. They started out, did everything Elijah told them to do, everything he said. Now this was Elijah's aim, was to get to the truth. The truth, I emphasize, is what, you, what makes you free. And without the truth, you're not going to go anywhere for God. You've got to have the truth. Aren't you glad tonight that you're sitting in a church that knows the truth? Not only believes it, we know it. We know Him who said, I am the truth. So the answer to if is taken care of by a decision. And then the aim of truth is taken care of by proof. So Elijah's going to prove what he said. Boy, he's trusting God. He's a man of God. And then we see the act of faith. The prophets of Baal called on their God. All day they just called and called and called. Come, set this wood on fire. Burn this sacrifice up. They called and called till they got to the place they were mad and disgusted. They got on top of the altar and broke it down, cut themselves, and blood gushed out of their bodies. And Elijah kept making fun of them. Somebody said, you shouldn't make fun of religion. He did. He said, hey, call a little louder. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's on a trip somewhere. I mean, he made fun of them because they were so dumb and stupid. And, brother, if you're believing anything other than Jesus, that's what you are. You may not like that word, those words, but that's what you are. Jesus is still the way. The only way. Always has been the way. Always will be the way. The Lord Jesus. In 1 Kings 18, now verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near, come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He made a trench around that altar. He had them dig a ditch around that altar. And then he put the wood in place. Then he put the sacrifice on the wood. He then had four barrels of water three times. Well, that would be 12 barrels of water poured on that sacrifice and on that altar, and it filled the trench all the way around. It was soaked. There wasn't a dry place on that altar, the sacrifice, the wood. The wood was soaking wet. Boy, it was a time to show forth the mighty power of Almighty God. And then, of course, the water filled the trench. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36, Elijah said, Lord God, of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that's Jacob, he said, let it be known this day that thou art God. Whew. Hallelujah. I want people to know my God. He's God. Whew. It takes my breath to think about him. Thou art God in Israel, and that I am, that I am your servant. And he said, and that I have done these things at thy word. What I've done let them know I'm doing it because you told me to. Did you know that if I thought for a minute, and I don't feel preach as good some days as others, I don't feel good, I'm flesh, I'm human being. But if I thought I ever got in this pulpit and didn't depend on God, I'd quit. I'd quit, brother. I don't spend time in that study hours every day, and Sammy can tell you I do, hours every day. I don't do that just to be playing church. I do it because I'm trying to get the mind of God and see what somebody might need here in this church. Somebody might need this. So in verse 37, Elijah said, Hear me, O God, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. 
Lord, they can't make up their mind. They're in uh, indecision. But I want you to turn them back to yourself. In verse number 38, Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the, and the stones burnt the rocks up. I mean, this was a fire. You think God's fire is a little, you don't know. Brother, the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Hey, that fire of God took care of the whole thing. And everybody standing there watching that miracle take place. The prophets of Baal saw it. The people saw it. And so in verse number 39, And when all the people saw it, they fell to their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. So you and I can say tonight that the Lord, He is God. He's the one that made us. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that prepared a place in heaven. And He's the one that will come and take us one day and take us to that land. Elijah, Elijah's act of faith was amazing, no doubt about it. He rebuilt the altar. He restored the truth. He rebuked the evil. He reminded the people. He had real faith. No sham faith, but real faith. And, of course, he had a confidence in God. He had an expectation from God. Do you have confidence in God tonight? You know, I do, but I'd like more. I'd like to never, ever question God. Sometimes I have, and sometimes you have probably. But the answer to if was settled by a decision. The aim of truth was settled when Elijah's words came to pass. And the act of faith was demonstrated beyond measure when it took place. But lastly, the awesome result, fire, fire, fire from God. And the fire, of course, you know fire, fire destroys, and fire cleanses, and fire purifies, and fire changes things. And the fire came and changed that whole situation. And then, somebody won't like this, but the prophets of Baal were God-haters. They were liars. They were leading people astray. Well, Elijah didn't say, well, I told you so. Now, you sweet little fellows, you go on and do your thing somewhere else. No, he said, take them. I want them destroyed. And now, these were people that would never get saved. These were people that would never own God. And Elijah had every last one of them destroyed. Now, brother, that's going a long way. Whenever you get that fired up to get rid of false cults and things like that, we can't do that today. We can't kill anybody. But we can stand firm on the Word of God to where they won't succeed in what they're doing. We can destroy them spiritually. In other words, we can show people our God. Live your God every day. Show everybody everywhere that you belong to God. Don't let anybody tell you you can't be saved or you're not saved. I mean, if you are saved, praise God. Be proud of it. Be glad about it. Don't be ashamed of it. But I like the way Elijah did that. And I like a man of God that trusts God, has confidence in God. And that's what I want to learn from. I don't want to learn from some of these jack legs. I want to learn from somebody that knows God. And that's the reason down through the years I've tried. Dr. Wales told me years ago, he said, son, start you a library. And, and get a few books if you want to get a few books contrary to what we believe to know what they say. But fill your library with good information, good men of God, and study them. Read a book. And he'd tell us to try to read a book every week, some kind of book every week. And he said reading will educate you more than this.